Hello everyone, this is the TP-Link WDR 4300 N750 router. It's a beautiful router. Now, this is my buddy's router and he decided to upgrade this to uh, using to use the DDWRT firmware, the latest beta firmware. Now, I don't know if there's something wrong with the firmware or with the way he flashed it, but uh, now we have this problem. And you watch it, you see that the, the uh, network light blinks then all the lights flash and then we get the same cycle over and over and over again I've tried the 3030 reset on it to no avail so there's no it doesn't come back from that uh, I've also tried pinging it for with using just about every IP address that he, you know he could have used uh, and you know doing the 3030 while it was doing it you know and basically at this point this router is in a I would say bricked state but really I'd say it's in a semi bricked state uh, I can't reach it through the LAN port I can't connect to it through Wi-Fi so at this point um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it apart and I'm going to connect to it using a serial uh, interface now the serial interface I'm using is called a uh, CP2102 module okay it's right in here and I'll, I'll take it out and then it's a UART uh, 5 volt and 3.3 volt uh, USB to uh, serial connection or UART connection. All right. So there's what that looks like. It's just a little USB. Uh, well, I wouldn't even call it a, a key. It's just a circuit board. So be careful with it. It's very uh, fragile. And also a little connector cable, which you're going to need to connect to the pins, which I'm going to solder to the. Uh, motherboard on this uh, router. This router specs 3.3 volts so I'm going to test this out to see if it's uh, actually outputting 3.3 volts but I'm not even going to connect the voltage to it so I don't even know if that's even an issue. Uh, I'm going to use the power from the router itself to power up the router and to connect to it using this. So let's get at it. Next thing I need to do uh, take all the aerials off of course so we'll take them out disconnect the uh, network cable unfortunately I think my buddy actually uh, flashed it using wireless now you know I'd say 99% of the time that's okay but uh, if you get a little glitch this is the sort of thing that can happen to you okay so that's all the aerials off they just unscrew turn the power off uh, there's four screws to remove the bottom one two three four so I'm going to take that off next and then take the cover off. All right, I'm using a number one Phillips screwdriver on this to remove these screws. All the screws are out, so now we're going to separate the case. I'm going to start from one end here, see what we get. Just pull it off. I think it's just basically a pry apart. Yeah, there we go. Just prize apart. There we go. And there we are. The insides, the guts. Now, I'll show you what we're going to uh, tie our little UART USB connector to here. Keep going and hopefully I'll be able to see this on here. Sorry guys. There we go. Right there. Oop, that's as close as I can get. Goes out of focus. These little pin, these little holes here are where I'm going to put my pins. And what I'm going to use for a pin is a little paper clip. These are, this is a real thin one. Um, I think it's the right width to see if it fits inside the holes. And it does, look at that. So, beautiful. Um, again, I'm only going to connect two of the pins on here, or maybe three uh, ground and, uh, what do you call it, uh, receive, transmit, and ground. Um, I'm going to show you a diagram on this also so you can see where which which pins are which because they're not labeled there as you can see. Okay, I've connected uh, I've connected the uh, UART, um, USB UART converter, serial converter, 
and uh, I'm testing its voltage and as you can see here it's uh, outputting 5.9 so it's currently set to 5 volts so there's a little trace on the back of the uh, board which I will show you as well that you need to cut uh, to make it 3.3 uh, volts. I think there might be some soldering too. We'll see what happens when I cut it. Alright, I cut the trace on the back of that of this board and uh, the serial or the UART co converter, USB converter, and now I'm getting zero volts. I used a utility knife to cut the trace, but um, basically at this point I need to solder up one of the pads to the other side. So I'll show you what I mean when I, meet, when I say that. Unplug it. Right. Let's see if I can bring that close enough for you to see it. All right, the pads are right here, and the pad that I I cut would have been between the ground and the five volt side. Now I'm going to solder the ground and the uh, three point three volt side, and it's clearly marked there. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it is. Uh, I'm just going to solder, solder, put a little blob of solder, solder between those two pads. And uh, that should give me 3.3 .3 volts. Okay, I've breached the two connections. I'm not sure whether you can see it or not, but there they are, the two. And it's grounded 3.3 .3 volts. I had to use a little piece of wire on the solder just to make it flow across the bridge, or to make a bridge. But then I used my continuity tester to make sure that I had continuity between the two pads and not the three pads. And uh, that was correct. So now I'm going to plug it in and see what kind of voltage I get. So let's put it back in here. And there's the voltage I'm getting now, uh, 3.41 after doing that bridge. So I'm ready to go ahead and uh, solder the little uh, pins into the uh, motherboard on the router. And I'm going to use my paper clip. I'm going to cut those to length using a, a wire cutter. and. Uh, We'll go ahead from there. All right, there's my three pins soldered in. Um, it was a bit of a trick, but uh, I've also tested them to make sure that they're not bridged or, or touching in any way. So uh, according to the um, instructions, or the picture I have on this, uh, ground is the first one. Transmit is the second one, and uh, sorry, yes, uh, sorry, receive is the second one, transmit is the third. So, ground, receive, transmit on those three pins, and there's what they look like when they're installed right there. Okay, so next we're going to connect it. Okay, we've connected this correctly. Uh, receive to transmit, transmit to receive, and the ground. Uh, none of the power connectors are connected. Uh, you don't need to. Uh, next, you're going to need a program called Putty, and I'll put a link to this uh, software right in the description, a direct link to it, and so you can download it yourself. And I just saved it to my desktop. So we double-click Putty, and we click Run here. And you see that it's a uh, terminal program. So at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to choose serial. Okay. And it, you know, as you see, there's settings for it. And it says serial line co COM1. Well, my uh, UART converter, a USB to UART converter, is on actual COM5. And I'll show you how to find that out. Click on your Windows button. And then right click computer, go to properties, then go to device manager. And once you get the device manager, you're going to go to your COM ports. And here we are, ports and uh, comms and LPT. So open that up. And you see here it says Silicon Labs uh, CP210X USB to UR bridge. And it says COM5. Now, you're going to need a driver for this uh, uh, piece of hardware to work. But I'll put that uh, in the description, the driver for that in the description as well as well as a link to where you can get it on Amazon. It's about six bucks. It's really worth the money if it fixes your router, really, six dollars. So, so we know now that it's on COM5, so we're going to close this stuff up. So we're going to go here and we're going to choose COM5. 
Uh, the speed is 15, uh, one, sorry, 115, 200. So 115,200. And then you got to configure your serial communications by clicking on serial here on the bottom. And all you need to do is turn off the flow control. So 9918111152200 and COM5. And we hit open. And there we have the successful connection to the WDR4300. And it's in a boot loop. Seems to be having a sort of an issue uh, mounting some file system. I saw that. Uh, kernel panic. And uh, more than likely caused by an incomplete or an incorrect uh, uh, flash of this router. But regardless, uh, this step is over. At least we know it's uh, up and running and that we can get into it. Uh, now we want to stop this constant reboot. So you see there where it says it'll stop for a second and say auto rebooting or auto booting and uh, yeah, auto booting in one second. Right when you see that, you want to type in TPL quickly. Uh, and I think the real trick is just to keep typing TPL quickly and enter. TPL, enter, TPL. And as long as you keep doing it, just TPL and enter real quick. And then you'll get it to stop. Okay, so now we're at a command prompt on this uh, um, router through the serial interface. Excellent. We know it's not dead. There is some hope. So I'm just going to minimize this. Next, we're going to go and get some files. Um, Let's go here to, uh, we're going to go to uh, DDWRT, and I'll just show you the whole way. Okay, so DDW, uh, there we go, DDWRT.com. And when you get to DDWRT, we're going to go to the router database. Then we're going to go to other la downloads. You could search it by name, but it's just going to give you the oldest version of this file. Then we're going to go to betas. And what, I'm going to go to 2014 or 2014. Uh, it's because it has the version of, of uh, firmware that I like the best for this router, and that's the 25697. So down at the bottom, you see that. So click on that link. And then we're going to scroll down to the very to actually you can just hit Control F and uh, type in WDR4300 like I did there, and you'll notice that there's two different uh, a bunch of WDR. So you could easily mistakenly put the WDR4310 in there instead of the 4300. Um, not sure what uh, he did, but anyways, we'll just go here. Now I understand that your router. You may not have a spare router like I do to surf the internet with. So uh, these are you can get these files. Uh, you know you can e these files can easily be put on a USB key. So you can go to a library or to a buddy's house and get these files from uh, him. Put them on the key and bring them back to your computer so you can fix these up. Okay. So next uh, we're going to download the factory uh, to DDWRT bin and the TLWDR4300 web flash bin. Now I've already done this, but uh, I, I, you know, I, I want you to download those two files and make sure you put them in a in a folder or someplace where you know where they are and you can find them easily. So I, I've done that. Then I, I went to my C drive where I put it, which is here TP link, and you see the R two two five six nine seven. That's where I put them, and you'll see here that there's two. Uh, factory W to factory to DDWRT bin and uh, TL dash WDR 4300 web flash bin. The one we're going to be using mostly is here. Uh, after we're done successfully bringing it back to life, then we can web flash it on in in the um, actually web uh, sorry in the uh, web utility for the router. So uh, so as long as you get this this file and the right one. Um, it's going to work. So I've got this one. Well, it should work. I got this one, and I have this one. 